in this video <coughs> we will be study about the ossification and applied also <coughs> this is our part 6 of the humerus series this is our part 6 ossification and applied firstly we will be talk about the ossification for ossification i will draw a diagram of the humerus this is our humerus this is our anatomical neck this is anatomical neck this is our greater tubercle this is our lesser tubercle firstly we'll talk about the ossification in the humerus there is one primary ossification center one primary ossification center and seven secondary ossification center in the humerus one primary ossification center and seven secondary ossification center primary ossification center on the shaft this is primary ossification center it appears during eighth week of intrauterine life primary ossification centers it appears during eight week of intrauterine life and now on secondary ossification center firstly we will talk about upper end upper epi epiphysis this is epiphysis up or also called upper end on the upper end upper end there is three secondary ossification center one is on the greater tubercle and other is on the lesser tubercle and other is on the head of the humerus head of the humerus it appears it appears during first year of life it appears during first year of the life and our greater tubercle this secondary ossification which is on the greater tubercle it appears it appears during third year of life it appears during third year of the life and which is on secondary ossification center which is on the head of the humerus it appears during first year of the life and our lesser tubercle uh, our this secondary ossification which is on the lesser tubercle it lesser tubercle appears during fifth year fifth year of life it appears during fifth year of life and these all three three secondary ossification center these three ossification center fuses these fuses and form conjoint epiphysis during seventh year of life fuses and form a conjoint epiphysis during seventh year of the life and these epiphysis conjoint epiphysis fuse with the shaft fuse with the shaft during 20 year of the life this epiphysis fuse with the shaft during 20 year of the life now on the lower end lower end has four ossification centers lower end has four ossification centers one is on the lateral epicondyle and one is on the medial epicondyle one which is on the capitula and one which is on the trochlea our lateral epicondyle it appears during it appears during 12th year of life it appears during 12th year of the life and our capitulum and which is this secondary ossification which is on the capitulum 
इट एपियर्स एंड ऑल्सो लेटरल फेलेंज ऑफ द ट्रॉकलिया इट एपियर्स ड्यूरिंग सेकेंड ईयर ऑफ लाइफ इट कैपिटुलम एंड लेटरल फेलेंज ऑफ द ट्रॉकलिया इट एपियर्स ड्यूरिंग सेकेंड ईयर ऑफ द लाइफ एंड मीडियल पार्ट ऑफ द दिस इज द मीडियल पार्ट ऑफ द ट्रॉकलिया इट एपियर्स ड्यूरिंग ट्वेल्थ ईयर ऑफ लाइफ इट एपियर्स ड्यूरिंग ट्वेल्व ईयर ऑफ द लाइफ एंड आवर मीडियल एपिकोंडाइल इट एपियर्स ड्यूरिंग फिफ्थ ईयर ऑफ द लाइफ ड्यूरिंग फिफ्थ ईयर ऑफ लाइफ आवर लेटल एपिकोंडाइल इज एपियर ड्यूरिंग ट्वेल्व ईयर ऑफ लाइफ मीडियल कैपिटुलम एंड लेटल फैलेंज ऑफ द ट्रॉकलिया दिस एपियर ड्यूरिंग सेकेंड ईयर ऑफ द लाइफ एंड मीडियल पार्ट ऑफ द ट्रॉकलिया दिस एपियर ड्यूरिंग ट्वेल्व ईयर ऑफ द लाइफ एंड मीडियल एपिकोंडाइल इट एपियर्स ड्यूरिंग फिफ्थ ईयर ऑफ द लाइफ दीज ऑल फ्यूजेस एंड फॉर्म टू एपिफाइसिस दिस वन इज एपिफाइसिस दिस इज लेटर एपिकोंडाइल कैपिटुलम एंड ट्रॉकलिया दिस फॉर्म वन एपिफाइसिस एंड दिस मीडियल एपिकोंडाइल फॉर्म एंड अदर एपिफाइसिस this is one epiphysis this is rest part these are another epiphysis this epi this fuses cap lateral epicondyle of the humerus capitulum and trochlea these all fuses these all fuses during during 14 year of the life these are fuses during 14 year of the life and this epiphysis this epiphysis is fuses with the shaft during 16 year of the life 16 year of the life and our medial epicondyle it fuses with the shaft during 18 year of the life 18 year of the life <coughs> this our lower end has two epiphyses in the ossification our lower end has two ossif two ossification two of epiphyses number one epiphyses is formed by the fusion of lateral epicondyle capitulum and trochlea these fuses and form one epiphysis and other epiphysis is formed by the medial epicondyle of the humerus this three structure fuse and form epiphysis this epiphysis fuses with the shaft during 16 year of the life and our medial epicondyle which is other epiphysis which fuses during which fuses with the shaft during 18 year of the life this is all about the ossification of the humerus now will we talk about the applied part for the applied part i will draw a posterior diagram of the humerus this is our posterior diagram of the humerus this is our surgical neck and this on the posterior surface middle half there is radial groove this is our radial groove this is our surgical neck along the surgical neck there is a nerve there is nerve which nerve is called axillary nerve axillary nerve it pass it it supply to the deltoid muscle and teres minor muscle and within the radial groove the nerve is passes which is called radial nerve this nerve is called radial nerve radial nerve and on the posterior aspect of the medial epicondyle of humerus there is a nerve which is called ulnar nerve this is our ulnar nerve if the if the fracture at the level of surgical neck if the fracture at the level of surgical neck if the fracture of the surgical neck then chances is our axillary nerve will damage 
if the surgical fracture if the surgical fracture then chances the fracture is chances the axillary nerve damage if the axillary nerve damage then our deltoid muscle will not work and deltoid muscle is not work then teres minor also not work if it not deltoid and teres minor will not work then our 15 to 90 degree abduction will lost because function of the deltoid is 15 to 90 degree abduction of the shoulder joint if this nerve is injured then our deltoid muscle will paralysis if deltoid muscle is paralysis it does not work 15 to 90 degree abduction this is commonly abduction 15 to 90 degree by the deltoid and teres minor if the if the fracture at the level of radial groove if the fracture at the level of radial groove then our radial nerve will damage if radial nerve will damage our if radial nerve will damage it causes saturday night palsy saturday night palsy saturday night palsy it means our extensor compartment of the forearm will paralysis paralysis our extensor compartment of the forearm will paralysis because our extensor compartment of the forearm is supplied by the forearm and arm is supplied by the radial nerve if radial nerve will compress or damage our extensor compartment will not work if it will not work our it causes wrist drop and saturday night palsy it also causes wrist drop wrist drop because our extensor compartment of the hand hand also supplied by the radial nerve posterior androsius branch which is the branch of the radial nerve that's why wrist drop and saturday night palsy will causes by the injured by the damaging or injured of the radial nerve which causes wrist drop or saturday night palsy if the fracture at the level of medial epicondyle of the humerus if the level fract fracture at the level of supracondylar fracture or medial epicondyle of fracture then our ulnar nerve will damage chances to the ulnar nerve ulnar nerve will damage chances the ulnar nerve will damage if the ulnar nerve will damage our flexors of the hand will contract if this it it will be contract this is claw hand this is the position which is called claw hand ulnar nerve will damage our muscle will contract this causes ulnar nerve causes claw hand claw hand damaging of the ulnar nerve causes claw hand which is contracting of the fingers this is called claw hand this is all about the applied and ossification part 6 thank you